one of the chaps is missing from this video. Due to COVID-19, this video is brought to you by one chap, Andy. Apologies if you don't like him. I don't like him either, but you have to put up with him on this film. Thank goodness Rich will be back soon. This is the 2020 Toyota Corolla Touring Sports Estate. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh God, an old boring car for old boring people. But you'd be wrong. Because this has been redesigned and rebuilt from the ground up. I'm talking new chassis, new engines, and completely new styling. Just look at those headlamps, will you? They're sharper than Leonardo's swords from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And look at that front grille. Sometimes, when I'm standing close enough, I can almost hear it growling. Imagine that. Those sports seats, they wouldn't look out of place in Hans's RX-7 in Tokyo Drift. Now, as you can tell, I'm a bit fond of this car, and there's a reason for that. It's mine. Yes, I picked up this blue beast a few weeks ago from Toyota, and it had big shoes to fill after the BMW 3 Series I had before. Now, I researched this car to death before I bought it, so I'm going to show you everything I know, and hopefully you'll see why it's so awesome. The Corolla is now in its 12th generation, proving it's still as popular as ever. New models include a sedan, a perky little hatchback, and the car we're in today, the Touring Sports. Both the hatch and the estate are built right here in good old Blighty. Let's have a rundown of the trim levels available. The Corolla has six iterations of trim, with the Icon starting at around £25,000, and the Excel is the top spec at around £30,000. The usual story applies here. If you want more toys and tech, you have to pay more money. But wait! Even the standard equipment on the Icon is bonkers brilliant! With a pre-collision system, lane departure alert, reversing camera, and yes, they all now come with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. But enough of this deliciously filmed footage from Toyota's press team. Let's cut to the proper homemade film. That's it, Andy. Naturally walk towards the car. This Corolla is in the Excel trim, which has these neat features, like keyless entry, an electric and kick to open boot feature, a full leather interior, and check out this blighter of a button. This button allows the car to park itself. You heard right. Parallel or perpendicular, this can do it. Time to have a butcher's at the interior of this car. First impressions are really, really good. Look at this. Soft touch fabrics everywhere. I mean, I'm talking stitched leather. I could like sleep on that. It's that comfortable. Fantastic. And I love that red detailing as it goes around. These sports seats are so comfy and they look great. That's the best thing. Normally they're hard in sort of performance cars, but these are comfortable yet they look the part. And this is a new thing with the Excel trim that you get full leather throughout the whole car, which is great. I love this polished finish on the door handles. That's really nice. That's also mirrored in the front of the actual center of the dash as well. The steering wheel feels really nice in the hand. A great array of buttons on here to control your volume, skip tracks, set your uh, cruise control, things like that. This car's also got paddles, which the two liter gets, not the 1.8. So, and it actually works really, really well. I have to say, really impressed with that. Two chap Rich would say, that's enough sitting around, Divine. <laughs> Let's get this lady moving and chat about just how pretty this car is. Haven't Toyota done a good job? I know a few people like Fifth Gear said it's a really boring to look at car. I don't know what they're talking about. I'm sorry, guys, I'm huge fans of yours, but my voice is going higher because I can't believe it. Seriously, if you look at the front, the front grille to start with isn't just that sort of angry face. It's got splitters, it's got valances, it's got scoops, it's got mesh. Mesh, people! The side profile view of this car, I'd say, is its weakest point. Um, it, it's just a bit bland. 
but as soon as you change the angle so you see a bit of the bum or a bit of the front, you think, yeah, yeah, this car means business. Now, the big question, of course, is what are the engine choices? There used to be three you could choose from. A 1.2 turbocharged, a 1.8 petrol and a 2 litre petrol. They have since dropped the 1.2 petrol turbocharged. So now you just got the 1.8 and the 2 litre to choose from. The 1.8 has 122 brake horsepower and the 2 litre has a much more respectable 184. And you can really feel the difference between those two engines. Now the 1.8 does 0 to 60 in 11.1 seconds, which is about as fast as a sloth trying to climb a tree. Very slow. But it will return you the mid 60s in MPG. In fact, I've heard rumors of people hitting the 70s, which is pretty impressive. The two liter, however, is a lot quicker. 0 to 60 takes around eight seconds, and it'll still get you, if you drive very sensibly, the high 50s, even the early 60s. I've managed to get 66 out of this when driving sensibly around country lanes and on the motorway, etc. And here's a top tip for you. If you see twin exit exhausts at the back, that proves that you're driving the two litre lump. That's an easy identifier. The 1.8, the exhaust is actually hidden behind the rear bumper and the actual rear bumper and rear valance and splitter is slightly different. So the two litre gets a more sporty look. Both cars cost 140 pounds in tax, which isn't amazing considering it's a hybrid and you'll still need to pay the congestion charge even though it's a hybrid, which also sucks balls. Let's talk about the hybrid system. Toyota have been doing hybrid systems for 20 years or more with their Prius. And my God, does it show. The car switches from EV mode to petrol with like the blink of an eye. You can't even spot it. Now the hybrid system in this car is a self-charging system. It's what Toyota call their self-charging system. What that means is you don't need to plug it in. There's no worries about plugging it in overnight. Now the hybrid mode works like this. Basically, if you put your foot down too hard, then the turning of the engine and your braking will help to charge the battery ready for electric mode. But if you let your foot off the accelerator, it goes into EV mode, which then uses that charged power from the battery to feed the electric motor and then turn the wheels. And if you pull away quite gently, we'll try it when these lights change. Listen to that. How cool was that? That's pulling away in electric mode. So there you go, electric mode. And then I put my foot down and of course like But if I let my foot off the accelerator and just lightly tap it every now and again, just to keep me going, it stays in EV mode. And I've got to say, it makes you feel really good because I've got the power in the two liter if I need it there. Standing by, clear way. God, I love that engine. That is very, very clever for a hybrid. <clears throat> Back to eco mode. But then I can just be like that in EV mode for ages. And in fact, I've done journeys where over 50% of my driving has been in electric mode. How cool is that? Now the gearbox that's in this car is a CVT gearbox, which a lot of people have complaints about. And I can see why a little bit, it's a little bit noisy when under stress, if you really push the engine. But because this car's got the acoustic glass, I don't know, maybe it's me, but I don't think it's too bad. I think people have given it such a bad rep. I think people have painted such a bad picture about it. It just doesn't bother me as much, or it's not as worse as some people painted that picture to be. The comfort, it's like being in my lounge. Okay, it has sports seats, but they're not your quintessential standard sports seats. They are extremely comfortable. Now the handling of this car is also absolutely brilliant. Because of this new chassis that Toyota have designed, which they say is a lot stiffer, it just goes round corners like nobody's business. There's nothing wallowy about it. There's nothing bouncy about it, but there's also nothing overly stiff about it, if you know what I mean. You can chuck it about uh, without giving yourself horrendous bone and muscle tissue injuries. I love the practicality of this car. It's comfortable and spacious. 
But just how spacious and practical is this Corolla? How does one even measure the practicality? Well, we have a new, rather fun way to test it out. Everyone uses a litre bottle to show where the cubby holes and the door pockets are. Not two chaps. This is the most important thing. Where do you put your worthers? Let's have a look around. In the central cup holders. In the glove box. In front of the shifter. In the door pockets. Under the armrest. In the seat pockets. In the rear cup holders. In the 2-litre, due to the battery eating some of the boot space, the size of the boot is 581 litres. Let's see if they fit in there. They do! So now we come to the crunch. Do you buy one of these cars? The simple answer is, in my opinion, yes you should. I researched this thing to death! Uh but it was worth it. If you are going from a family estate that is diesel and you want uh, a similar sized car that has similar 0 to 60 times, so you can have a bit of fun, but I like that. Did you see that? Uh, but you want the same sort of practicality and you also want to be returning similar MPG as a diesel, this has got to be the car to consider. So owning a Corolla and telling people that you own a Corolla might not earn you a lot of street cred, but I really think that Toyota are trying to rebrand this image and improve it. It looks great from the outside. It looks great from the inside. Now, before I go, I just have to ask so politely to please hit subscribe. So on that watermark down there or down there, it's also on our main page. We've got even more exciting videos to come. They are going to be brilliant. There's one very, very exciting one coming that's Rich's new car, but I'm not going to give the game away yet. But, um, but yeah, it's a Volkswagen Golf GTI with the performance pack. <laughs> I'm sorry Rich couldn't be around today. Uh, this whole COVID thing has been a nightmare and we wanted to get this video out so that you, the viewing public, can enjoy it. Uh, but for now, all I can say is thanks for watching. <laughs>